Greetings to all the members of my global home church and all the guests here today. My heart's heavy on this weekend and um, I'm real sad at how this world's become. I'm sad and disgusted how my once great nation that I fought for 20 years in the military for, uh, formerly America, now Obamaland's become. I'm totally disgusted at what the so-called church has become and I'm just sad. I really am. My heart's so heavy. <coughs> we have to understand. <coughs> still, <coughs> excuse me. I'm still getting over my cold. You have to understand that first of all, Christians aren't even taught the truth in most churches anymore. They're fed milk toast. They're fed garbage. They're fed baby food. They get told lots of jive talking, telling them lies from the pulpit, and they don't even believe the rapture. It's going to happen for the most part. And they don't understand how little time we have left to reach lost loved ones, lost friends, lost neighbors, strangers. Our time is so short to be able to reach them. And I think quite often about how people are going to feel, Christians, if they actually make it to heaven, when they stand before Jesus and have to explain to him why they were too lazy, too nonchalant, too la da too non-caring to even witness to those who were lost and dying and headed to hell. What a sad day that's going to be. I can't think of anything sadder than someone spending forever, first in hell and then their eternal home after the great white throne judgment in the lake of fire. I just can't imagine it. It, it just, it, it sickens me. It, it sickens me down to the deepest depths of my gut. And it wrenches my heart to think of people who will just be suffering forever away from God's love, away from family and friends. And they joke all the time about how they're going to be there with their friends and hell's going to be a big party and I want to be there. They have no clue what they're talking about. It's going to be the worst possible fate anyone could ever imagine. And then multiply that times about a trillion. That's how bad it's going to be. This world is lost and dying and hurting and crying out for Jesus Christ. The evil, of the, of the, you can feel the pulse of hatred, the pulse of wickedness, the pulse of evil, as Satan takes over more and more in this earth and starts, because, see, here's, here's the problem. When people push God away, people push Jesus Christ away, they're not going to, they don't have to put up with that. God or Jesus, man, they can snap their fingers and wipe this whole earth off the map. But they don't. They give us free will. And when you turn God and Jesus Christ away, they will leave. But that void's going to be filled. If it's not God and Jesus, by default, it's Satan and his demons. And right now, Satan and his demons are taking over this earth like nothing I've ever seen before. My head spins looking at the news now, trying to figure out what I'm going to go ahead and post on a day-to-day -day basis as a watchman. There's so many things right now, I could do 100 videos a day, my friends, and never begin to cover what needs to be covered. But you don't have time to watch all that many videos. And I try to focus on what the Holy Spirit leads me to do to, to just, just get you tunneled in, tunnel vision, to be able to see what you need to see for that day. But not just see and act. Anyone can see. Anyone can be a talker. But to be a doer is what's important. Talking the talk doesn't get impressed Jesus Christ. Walking the walk impresses Him. Picking up your cross daily and following Him. Being persecuted for Jesus Christ. And still having the guts and the backbone to stand up for him impresses him. The harvest is plentiful. The harvesters are few. And one thing that Christians do, the few that do witness, a mistake they often make, they try to pound it home too much on people. We are seed planters. We're to share the gospel and not to beat them over the head with it, but share the gospel let them know when you start seeing them get defensive, back off. Tell them you love them. And then just pray for them. And let God and Jesus Christ do the rest. Because I'm telling you, after the rapture, if they're left behind, they're going to remember. Those seeds that we planted, they're going to remember. And they're going to fall back on that. And they're going to say, hey, I was, I was totally wrong. I was a total bonehead. My mom and dad, my, my husband or wife, my brother or sister, my aunt or uncle, whoever, is gone now. I know the aliens didn't take them, <laughs> like the excuse is going to be. They were raptured. 
and they will fall back and somehow get the courage. The Holy Spirit won't be here. It's just going to be ultra hard. But I believe many will get the courage to be able to stand. And I believe that many of those countless numbers who are standing before the throne of God <laughs> will be those who remembered what we taught them. And they refused the mark of the beast at the consequence of losing their own head and losing their life. But see, if we don't even bother to plant the seed, if we're too lazy or non-caring to even plant the seed, it's not going to do any good. Because once we're gone, again, the Holy Spirit is the restrainer. He's the one that restrains evil. Once he's gone, he's going to take the bride of Christ with him because he dwells within the true bride. There'll be a little bit of the Holy Spirit here because he's omnipresent, like God and Jesus. He's always around, but it's a tiny bit. He's not going to be tugging on your heart, living in your heart, trying to lead you and guide you to the cross. He'll be gone, and you'll have to deal with everything all by yourself. I can't even imagine trying to live without the Holy Spirit. I, I couldn't make it, man. I, I, there's no way I can make it. He leads and guides and directs my paths 24-7, 365. And we have to get understand that we need to get off of our hinds, turn off the television, get away from going out to all the Hollywood movies and all the fun stuff you want to do, and start focusing on reaching a lost and dying world without Jesus Christ is heading for hell. That's what it's all about. And we need to start sacrificing self for the good of the church, for the good of Jesus Christ. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about the four wall buildings, the, 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 the whitewashed mausoleums that are everywhere now. The church have turned into a pathetic joke for the most part. I can't find, I live in a city voted as one of the most Christian cities in all of Obama land. I can't find one church that preaches the true gospel of the Word of God. It's pathetic. That's why I had this global home church. I'm in church every day, all day and all night, seven days a week, 30 days a month, 12 months a year. Because I'm always working for Jesus Christ as a watchman, as a preacher, as a teacher. And I do it because I owe Jesus everything. He has saved my life countless times when I was backslidden. And I was dying and heading to hell, as those who know me know. I would have been in hell right now, just agonizing, knowing the future that was waiting for me in the lake of fire. But he had mercy on me dozens of times and, and just gave me so many chances. I can't even begin to, to scratch the surface to repay him for all of eternity. All I can do is give him my all. It's not much, but I do it gladly with an open heart. And I will never stop serving my Lord and Savior, my Master Jesus Christ. I'm his lowliest of low slaves. I'll never stop serving my master until he calls me home, either through death or through the rapture. I can't do anything less. And we're all called to do the same thing. And see, everybody is not called to do the same ministry. Not everybody can, can do video ministries. Not everyone can do uh, large online ministries through YouTube and Facebook or Daily Motion or Twitter or whatever. Some people can only do what they can do, <clears throat> whether it's texting. Maybe it's just putting a scripture on your Facebook wall each day. Maybe it's just uh, making yourself available to give someone some good biblical Christian counseling if they're hurting and suffering. There's always a way, putting a tr putting tracks on windows, uh, under, under uh, windshield wipers on cars and parking lots. There's always a way for someone to reach people for Jesus Christ. It, there's no excuse. It's just pure laziness and apathy to say, well, I can't do anything, uh... Paul Kidd and people like him will do it for me. No, it's not how it works. We're all accountable to Jesus Christ to be witnesses. We're not all accountable to be watchmen, preachers, and teachers. No, that's the job that only a few are called to do. And sadly, few of the, of the few that are called are doing it the right way because they don't do it biblically. But we're all called to be seed planters, to point the, the laws of Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit can gently kneel them and, and, the, and the precious blood of Jesus Christ can wash their sins, make them whole. Another problem with the church and Christians in general is they don't believe, besides not believing in the pre-tribulation rapture, see the problem with this is this. Many will say it doesn't matter about what, you, what rapture you believe in. I beg to differ and I'll tell you why. If you don't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, you have a false sense of security. You think that the tri when the tribulation starts, You'll be able to know A to Z what's going to happen. You'll know what's going to happen when the mark of the beast is here. You'll know it. When this happens, you'll know it. And see, Christians, by doing that, you give yourself a false sense of security. And you think that, hey, I can go ahead and put off living a holy life. I can put off repenting. I can put off working for Jesus Christ because I'll know 
when to make that decision during the tribulation. But here's the problem. First of all, no one's guaranteed to survive the immediate aftermath of the rapture. Blink your eyes. That's how fast it's going to be. And if you're riding in a car, you're in an airplane, you're in a boat, you're in a ship, you're on a plane, you're on a train, you're on walking across the street, whatever happens, that uh, that driver or pilot is a Christian and they're gone, everybody on board there perishes. And guess what? If you weren't raptured when the rapture happens then, you weren't ready to begin with. So your next breath is going to be in hell. There'll be natural disasters everywhere. There'll be raping, pillaging, murdering, marauding gangs everywhere. I think there'll be that just be martial law have to be declared. It'll be so horrific. If you survive that part, you're not guaranteed anything because any of the plagues, any of the bowl judgments can wipe you off. Two-thirds, roughly, of all human beings are going to die in the tribulation. And if you die, and you're not ready with for Jesus Christ, guess what? Your next breath is in hell. And you spend forever in hell and then the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment. So that's a terrible way to have to, to not believe in pre-tribulation rapture. And people who you who teach against pre-tribulation rapture, those who listen to you, guess what? Their blood's going to be on their own heads. Oh yeah, because they didn't listen, but it's also going to be on your own hands. Dumanos. Your hands. And you're going to answer for that one day, my friends. You will answer Jesus Christ for that one day. That's one. That's the problem with, with the pre-tribulation rapture, not believing in it. Secondly, and even worse, is that Christians, for the most part, teach that once you're saved, you're always saved. They teach that you pray a few words, ask Jesus Christ to forgive you your sins, ask Him to come into your heart, and you're saved for good. Nothing, nothing can ever happen to you. Let me ask you a question. If a child uh, steals, and their parents uh, punish them for stealing, and then after the punishment they say, Okay, all's forgiven. You can go ahead and, and start anew. Does that mean they can just keep on stealing and it's cool? Or they can do other bad things and it's cool? Does, is that a carte blanche? If someone is standing before a judge and the judge says, I'm going to let you go this time, but if you break the law again and stand before me, I'm going to put you in jail. And if that person does break the law again, is the judge going to just let it go and let it slide? Or is he going to go ahead and, and hammer him and put him in jail? If a cop comes to your house and tells you that if you stop playing loud music in that loud party, he won't come back to, to get you, what does that mean? It means if you do keep playing loud music, he will come back and get you and arrest you. But see, people don't want to believe the truth. The Bible has 250 scripture that proves you have to repent of your sins after you're saved. Jesus' own words. If you don't live a holy life and finish the race, as the Apostle Paul said, you won't make it. And as Jesus said to the church of Sardis, which to be part of that church, he had to be saved by his precious blood, Holy Spirit filled, and water baptized by immersion baptism. He told them, in Revelation 3, he told them that you think that you're doing great, <laughs> you're nothing but you're falling apart, you're falling by the wayside. He says, you're just wicked, filthy sinners. Few of you have white garments that will be, make it to heaven. And if you don't fall back to your first love and repent, he tells them, then I'll come on you like a thief in the night, and you'll be left behind from the imminent rapture. And he tells them, in verse 5, that if you don't finish the race with spotless garments, I will blot your name out of the book of life and deny you before the Father and the angels of heaven. And there's only one book of life. The Bible talks about the book of life and the land's book of life. They're the exact same book, my friends. Don't let anyone tell you any different. And again, if you listen to me now, that's between you and the Lord. You'll pay for it later. It's very, very important to get ready for the rapture. I'm putting in the... The box below the video title. I'm going to pray here in a minute. I'm putting in that box below the title, though, this same prayer in six vital next steps. I talk fast. If you can't keep up, pray as soon as you can. No one's guaranteeing more time in their life. I'm also putting in that box my Tribulation Survival Guide video. It tells you how to get saved in the Tribulation and what to expect A to Z because most people are going to be here, sadly, and stuck here. So if you don't want to be left behind for the imminent rapture and you finally want to get off your high horse and stop being cocky and haughty and arrogant and repent, pray with me now before your time runs out. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. Went back to heaven and be at the right hand side of the Father to make a place for all your children forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Wash my heart white as snow. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. If you want me to pray for you for anything, contact me. I'll pray for you every day. If God answers that prayer, it's all because of Him. Nothing to do with me. I'm the least in His kingdom, my friends. True Christians, again, keep witnessing and praying. If they won't listen, history in them and God. 
But look up, my friends. Our different draws and I, we fly soon. Have a blessed weekend and get this word out to everybody you possibly can. Take care. Thank you. Bye.